Okay, so I said for this episode that I was going to teach you guys how to use actions in Marvel Pro. So we're just going to start right away. I'm going to start immediately. So, first thing we're going to do is the blinking and smiling animation. Curl. going to hide these. And start with the left eye, actually. Ooh. So what we're going to do to start the action bones is you're going to select the bones that you've made for blinking because we did at the end of the, of the last episode. So click on the bone you want. and. I don't exactly know where here the tool we need is, but I do know that in order to open the menu, you need to do the shortcut Control K. Yeah, so now you have the actions. Boom. Where is it actually? Hold on. Oh, actions. Here it is. In Windows and in Actions. This is the main line, which is this, basically the animation line. But we're going to essentially make a new line for the action. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So this is the main line, the animation line, where you get to move all the bones and then they do an animation. So for this, you need to make sure that you're on the bone layer. And then it takes up the name of the bone. And this turns like a light baby blue. And this turns bold. So now you have an action for a blink. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, animate basically the direction which the bone is going to turn to activate the action. So we're gonna turn the bone this way. You can do it at any point, like through any range. I like to do it between zero and 30 seconds. If you turn the bone, you need to go on transform bone or T and then just, oh wow, it seems like this is parented to this. Hold on, let me fix that real quick. Uh, I guess we have to edit the bones first. So, in order to make sure that the bones do not cause too much trouble and that they only turn to a certain point and don't exceed it, we're going to do the bone constraints. So, I'm going to go on the bone tool, select tool, this, or B. Go on bone constraints, angle constraints, and then... Yeah, minus 90, or actually this has to be zero, and this minus 90. So now as you can see, the bone only turns to here. So it turns 90 degrees this way. If you wanted it to turn the other way, then it would be zero, 90. Now it doesn't turn any more than this. So within this range of the bone turning, we are going to close the eye. So select. I'm not going to animate the individual points first. What I like to do is basically drag it into a closing motion and then edit it so that it takes the <clears throat> 
pose of a closed eye. So to do that, I go to magnet or X. And I just So to activate those points, all you need to do is click on C, curvature, and just like the points a little bit. I'm pretty sure there's a way for the bones to be shown as you're doing this. Hold on. Show Bezier curve, so you go here. So it just shows it automatically when you're editing it instead of having to go through curvature. So the sclera and just or just use X. I'm going to here and remove the visibility so we can see what's under. No, this is a bottom lash. My bad. And then let's go G. Select all the points. T. And then drag. Yeah. And then G. Select. And then drag. we go. So now, if we look at the eye, Make sure to save regularly. So, we're gonna do the smile next. Bro, I'm gonna repeat the steps. To select an action, you double click. Make sure that you are on the bone layer. B, or select bone. Select the bone you want. Go on bone constraints if it already doesn't have constraints, like you can see the constraints when you click it. Go on bone constraints. Like that, 90 degrees or you can do 70 degrees if you like. Then, go here, click, and you should see the name of the bone that you selected. Okay? Then select a range in the timeline. Go on T or transform bone. Drag it all the way down. And then animate it. 
what you want to. Oh, okay. It's done. I feel like the face is kind of... Okay, so at this point in time, the only thing I'm doing is just animating the other eye. And usually for what I do for this to make them look symmetrical is uh, make the action for the new bone where the eye is going to be animated and then take the previous blinking bone and then turn it in the new action for the other blinking bone so that the eye from the previous blinking bone would blink and then I could essentially like copy it by hand like just replicate it on the other eye but it wasn't working because when I turned the bone inside of the new blinking action it the animation wasn't playing essentially so what I did is do it the opposite way around so I took the new bone and I tried animating it within the old blinking bone and yeah, it worked for that. So at the end, what I did was I made sure that I created the action for the new bone, the blinking bone, and I animated it so that both the eyes blinked for that one previous bone. And then when I was done and I was happy with the results, I would take the keyframes for each of the layers involved in the new blinking bone and I copy them and paste them to the new action and then do the bone animation for the new one so yeah problem solving I guess it was kind of inconvenient but at least I found a solution Okay. 
I can zero. You don't have any strength, that's good. B. And let's make these blank. Let's reactivate some of these layers. Oh, we got something good going on. It doesn't blink. Did I just put this out? I think that's the best we can do right now. I noticed that this bottom lash is a little bit thicker than this up here, so I'm just gonna fix that. That's all we're gonna do right now. So, I've saved, and that's it. Next up, what are we doing next up? Next up, pretty sure the model's finished. I'm not really too sure how you do like hair yet. I'm still trying to figure that out. But next up, I'm gonna teach you how to do the mouth rig. It's probably not gonna be on this model, actually. I'll, I'll figure it out when I get to it. Thanks for watching.